Hi, it's Corrine for Knitwit Collections, and today I have an adorable mini album to share with you today. I do have a full start to finish on this album. It's not a tutorial, but it is a um, start to finish that I put in quick play. I will also flip through the album right now. For those of you that don't want to stay tuned for the start to finish, then you can just see a quick flip through of the album. But check out the description box. I do have a blog post of an album that I did similar to this and I have all the measurements listed in that blog post. So I will link my blog post down there if you want the measurements of how to make an album just like this. And I will also link the paper pack that I used from Knitwit Collections. It's called In the Woods and they also have three other coordinating. They have solids, um, some more papers, and alphabets that you can get that coordinate and that's what I used in today's album so check out the description box for links for all of that so my album if you follow me you have seen one of these before it's a coin envelope mini album the album is six and a half by four and three quarters the spine is four inches look at this adorable collection. They have lots of elements and alphabets and labels that go in it. So on the front here I did the front and the back the same paper. I put two of these little mushrooms on the back. On the front I have the little bear and I chose to have my cameo cut all of these out but they are easily, you can print them out and easily cut them by hand which I sometimes do as well if I'm watching a movie or something like that. And um, I also have a video where I show how to use digital paper packs in your Cameo. You don't have to have a Cameo. You can use your Cricut if you want. You, like I said, you can print them out and cut them yourself. But I will also link that video below showing different ways to use the digital paper packs. And just a side note, you don't even need to have a Cameo. You can download the Silhouette uh, software for the Cameo. It's Silhouette America. It's free software and you can manipulate your pages, adjust them, size them, do whatever you'd like, and then just print them out and cut them by hand. You can also do it through Paint, Word, whatever program, uh, Photoshop, whatever you're comfortable with. So um, check out the description box for more information. And when you buy a digital paper pack, it's yours to keep forever. You can print it out as many times as you want. So not only will I have made a mini album with this, but I plan on making a scrapbook page and probably a card with this. Um, on this side here I used some green satin ribbon. I thought it went well with it. And there are six envelopes in this. On the front here I used a frame that comes in the element pack and I just printed out a little piece of paper to go behind it. I used one of their labels, backed it with the same craft cardstock. I'm using Hobby Lobby's craft cardstock. I added several of the flowers, popped one of them up, and every single envelope has <clears throat> excuse me, pattern paper and different brads that went along with the collection. And when you open it up, it has a large photo mat. This is a four and one eighth by six and one eighth photo mat. That way the person receiving the album can put a four by six photo and still have a tiny border of craft. And also more photos can be placed inside these albums or inside these envelopes, I should say. So this album, although it's tiny, it holds a lot of photos. So I won't open all of these up, but they're all the same. On the back here, I absolutely love this little guy. Look how cute he is. And look at that pattern paper. I backed him twice to give him more stability because he's essentially a pocket. I added some of these acorns down here and some of the grass, and I just kind of tucked him between the two layers of grass. I added a photo mat with this adorable paper and some more of those flowers, and that just tucks behind there. So. A photo can be placed on this page and also on the back of this journaling or a photo. Added the green on this side. On this side I did a side bracket pocket that I designed in my cameo. I used one of the elements and look how cute this is. It even has like a little staple in it. It comes just like that. This adorable polka dot paper. I have a thing for polka dots. I have a mat that a photo or journaling can be placed on the back. And then I did a little photo, so this is for a two by two. Added some of those mushrooms. I love Knitwit Collections. So uh, I did the yellow on this side with tinier brads. On this side I did a bracket pocket as well. Use this adorable skunk, he's holding a flower. I added some of the additional flowers and an acorn here. Again, some more adorable paper. 
I did two little photo mats with the acorns. I love this paper. This says life is a picnic. So those just tuck in here. Little photos can be tucked in here as well, or photos, four by six. Another pocket that's a little bit larger this time. I use this picnic type paper. I love that. It reminds me of a um, tablecloth, a picnic tablecloth. This adorable birds and these little buttons that come with them. And look at the paper in the background there. To the pocket, I have two photo mats using that adorable paper again. I have another photo mat with some flowers, both of them backed on craft cardstock. And one of my favorite elements that always comes in the pack is these paint chips. It says, let's go for a walk in the woods. I always add those. They're a perfect journaling spot or just for decoration. I added the red with some red brads. On this side, this adorable tree, look at the shading that already comes in the tree. I did edge everything in vintage photo, but can you, I hope you can pick up on that shading that comes in the tree already. And again, you can size this up or down. I made this large, I wanted it to go on the back of the paper, and then I added this owl. This is the cutest owl I've ever seen. And I added a tiny bird and used him as a pocket, so I have a tiny photo mat in here that tucks behind there, but yet you can still see the tree. And then on the side, I did the coordinating green. And the last page is another bracket side pocket with a mat and those flowers, polka dots. I used a label that says Adventure Time and the mushrooms there. And I did a diagonal pocket on this side with some grass, this adorable little fox, some leaves that come in the collection with a We Heart Picnics. Again, some cute paper. And then another photo mat for a two by two photo, some of the mushrooms, and then some of that adorable paper. So I love how whimsical and fun this album is. Please check out the description box for all the information that you need. And also please stay tuned for the start to finish if you'd like to see how this album came together. Thanks so much for stopping by and I hope you check out Knitwit Collections. Thanks for staying tuned for the start to finish. I did not start the camera when I thought I did, therefore I don't have the full start to finish on how I made the hinge system, so I just quickly wanted to share that with you. I'm using Kathy Orta's hidden hinge system. Mine do not have the flaps that she has on hers. I will link you to her tutorial. She has a very detailed instructional video on how to do it. I'm just quickly going to overview um, how I did it. Now, my envelopes that I'm using are six and a half, so I made my hinge six inches, that way it can tuck in between the envelope. And I normally don't figure out the length, I usually leave it at 11 inches and figure it out afterwards, but for sake of video I did figure it out ahead of time. I cut mine to eight and a half. This will give me six different hinges for my envelope. So I also have a one half inch gusset, that's what you have to figure out as well, is how big you want your gusset to be. So when you do a one half inch gusset with her system, it's a very simple, there's nothing to figure out. You do one half inch increments, you wanna do two of them for your flanges. That's the piece that's going to hold your envelope or your pocket onto. So you do one half inch, one half inch, then whatever size gusset is. One half inch, one half inch, whatever size gusset. In my case, I'm using one half inch gussets. So I'm doing one half inch, one half inch, one half inch for my gusset. So on and so forth. So as you can see, I did one half inches all the way up to eight, and then it stops at eight and a half. So then on the back side, you want to add tape to every second flange. Again, this is going to be my, my hinge here. So every second hinge you want to add tape and glue the two hinges together. Then leave a space for your gusset, glue the next two together using double sided tape is what I would recommend. Leave your gusset alone, add your double sided tape to the second piece, glue those together. When you're done, you're going to end up with six different hinges. You can make this, you can make eight, you can make five. That's why I do like her system. You can make however many that you want, and it's doubled up. So these are two of the one half inch pieces adhered together. I left my gusset alone, 
adhered the other two pieces, left my gusset alone, so on and so forth. Then when you're done, this is what it's going to look like. And actually for video, I just used wet glue and it worked well, but I prefer using um, a strong double-sided adhesive. So what you wanna do then is add tape to the entire back. This back piece is what's going to adhere to your book. So you want that to be, I add a lot of tape. I don't spare tape because I don't want it coming apart. Then depending on what type of mini album you're making, if you're sandwiching two pieces of paper on top of your hinge, you're gonna to wanna to add tape to both sides. In the album I'm making today, I used a coin envelope, so I just am adhering it to one side, then I use pattern paper to adhere to the other side, so I added my tape to the pattern paper instead. So here I just show you that I only added tape to one side of each of the hinge, and you want to do the same side. So now let's get on with the video. Thanks so much for watching. So I've already started to adhere my pages and that's when I realized I did not turn my camera on. So I'm just showing you here that I've attached some of my pages already. And as I showed you previously, I only added tape to one side. So I'm adhering my envelopes only to the one side, doing one at a time and matching them up as I go to make sure I get them even. So here's for my covers of my book. I've attached two pieces of eight and a half by 11 together with a one half inch tape. That way I overlap them by one half inch. My spine is four inches by six and a half and I added it to a piece of Tyvek that is six and a half by six, I believe, adding tape to the entire back. And now my covers, which are four and three quarters by six and a half. I'm going to attach them onto the craft cardstock. I'm adding tape to one side and I'm putting two pieces on the side that's going to be near the spine. I like to add wet glue as well. I'm using a template that I made that is two pieces of chipboard thick along with a thin piece of like serial weight chipboard in between. That's going to leave me enough space between my spine piece and my front and back cover so the book opens and closes nicely without cracking the paper. So now I don't measure out the length beforehand, I do it afterwards. So I'm measuring out a half an inch and cutting that off. Otherwise you're just wasting tape if you have to and it makes it a little bulkier. Now I'm adding tape to the entire perimeter of my um, cardstock and mitering the corners. Again, not going all the way up to the chipboard, leaving a little space. So I've bent the paper ahead of time just to kind of get it moving in the right direction. And now I like to adhere the long sides down first and then the short sides. And after I adhere the long side, I'm tucking in those corners. It'll give you a nicer edge to your finished corners. So I'm really pressing those down with my bone folder. And here is my book. I'm going to cover up that middle spine piece so I'm measuring it to a little bit less than six and a half. I did about six and a quarter and I just, I didn't even measure out how long I wanted it to be. I just wanted it to go about an inch over the spine piece. And I'm adding a lot of tape because that's what's going to be where my binding is, my book is going to be. So I don't spare any tape. I'm removing all the tape backing and really pressing down that. Now I'm very gently running my bone folder over the creases to crease them. Again, going around my entire book, make sure I have a nice creased album. And now I'm going to add my pages in. I do it one at a time. So I'm getting it where I want, pressing down the gusset, and now I'll go ahead and remove the second tape piece, so on and so forth. And this way I'm getting it perfectly in the center of my album. I didn't worry about that cardstock piece going in the middle because I was going to be covering it up with this adorable pattern paper. I'm just showing you a little closer look at some of the papers that I'm using. There's lots more in this collection, but these are the ones that I've printed out so far. And I've added my tape to the back and I've also distressed every all the edges in vintage photo. I just wanted to get rid of that white core. So I like to remove the top piece get it exactly where I want. Once I'm happy with it, then I remove the backing from the rest of the tape and press it down. This makes sure I get I can get it on evenly. So I continue to add all my pages, or all my pattern papers, I should say. And now these are the going to be the front inside and back cover pieces. Again, doing the same thing, just removing the top piece, getting it where I want, and then going back and removing the rest of the tape backing.
So now I'm going to add my brads on with the pattern paper. I did a little hole reinforcement that matched the previous page or the page that's next to it. I'll add some crochet twine. I like to double knot it, make sure it's secure, wrap it around a few times and cut it off. And I did that with all the pages. So here I'm showing you quickly. I decided I wanted to add a little color to my gusset, so I'm using the same pattern paper and wet glue and adding a half inch strip by six and a half to go down the middle of every page. Sometimes I do this, other times I leave it the normal cardstock that the base book is made out of. Now I've cut a few, I think four different pockets from my Cameo. I did two side pockets and two bottom pockets adding my wet glue and adhering those down. Those are clips that I got from my grocery store. They're made for chips to hold chips, but I use them all the time to hold papers in place while they're drying. They're great to have on hand. You could use binder clips as well. And now I'm simply starting to adhere all my pieces together. That is a frame that comes in their element pack. It's already made, they, they give you a lot of embellishments that are already put together for you that you don't have to, or they give you the separate pieces that you can build them. Like all that you see there, the flowers, the mushrooms, the buttons, the ribbon, all that comes separate. So if you wanna build your own, you can build your own as well. I love the flexibility you have with their paper packs. So I backed that little label on some craft cardstock, glued that down, and I popped up one of the flowers. And look at this adorable little guy. I'm edging him in vintage photo, and here I'm adding a layer of grass on. You'll see in a moment, I decided I wanted it to be a little bit taller, which I could have stretched it out if I wanted to before I printed it out, but I had another one sitting there. So I just pulled that up on the edge, and I will tuck that behind there, and I love the look of that. that shading you see in the grass. I did add a little vintage photo on the tips, but that shading comes already done for you. So I'm tucking in some of the acorns, one behind the furthest piece of grass and the other in between, and I'm tucking him in between, and I'm making a photo mat to go behind him. I'm making him sort of a pocket, so had I thought of it ahead of time, I would have doubled him up just to make sure he was secure, but you'll see how I fix that in a moment. So I'm adding a couple flowers to my photo mat. I love these whimsical flowers. I love this entire collection. And here's where I decided I need another piece. So I just cut him out in white, cut off the piece that, the bottom piece of him, since I wouldn't have been able to tuck it down since it's already glued down. And I'm just adding that behind him. I did edge it in vintage photo in case any of it showed, it would just be brown. So again, just tucking it down. And now I'll use, I'm letting it dry before I add my photo mat. So here, the skunk I wanted to be a little bit dimensional, so I added some white cardstock behind him. Again, doing the same thing with the grass. This time I had two pieces ready because I knew I wanted it to stack. I'm adhering that down, leaving some of the, the top blades open. That way if I want to tuck stuff behind him, I can. And now the same flowers, they come separate, the same flower that he's holding. I added a couple of those to the side just to tie in that flower. You'll see me put a piece of um, cardstock over it to press it down. I like to do that so if any extra glue seeps out, it gets onto the cardstock and not on my fingers, and then my fingers get back on the paper and make a mess. So you'll see me do that a lot throughout this album. I'll use a, a scrap piece to press down my elements after using wet glue. Here's another photo mat, edging in Distress Ink. Another photo mat, I decided I wanted a tiny photo mat on top of the photo mat. So I just used some craft card stock, a little two and a quarter piece square. And so now that's a perfect fit for a two by two photo. I'm adding a couple of the mushrooms. This is a bracket pocket that I just used my Cameo to offset that pocket with, so it gave me a perfect frame to go inside that bracket pocket. And now I'm adding this cute little bird. You'll see me use the bird a few times throughout this album, and 
they're all different sizes. So I love that you can size all these elements. You can really make it your own. And that's one of the reasons I love digital paper packs, besides the fact that I can make, I can print this out a million times if I choose to and make all different projects with it. Once you purchase them, they are yours to keep forever. So same thing. I used this tree a couple times, but on this page, I wanted it to basically go um, along the entire uh, length of the, the page. And now I'm using this adorable owl as a pocket. So I doubled him up and I doubled the bird because I, I thought the bird was gonna stick off as part of the pocket. Um, in the end, I pretty much glue the bird directly onto the owl. So I just added glue to the left and the bottom of the owl's feet to make it into a pocket. So cute. So that's that same bird just sized way down and same flowers sized way down as well. That's my little photo mat. Now that's going to tuck behind the owl, but yet you can still see the tree. Another photo mat with some more of the flowers that I made, um, basically a large, medium, and small. And now I'm adding a pop dot to the third one. Some more of those mushrooms. Here I'm adding a diagonal pocket and I wanted my pocket not to go completely diagonal. I wanted it to, have um, a little bit of a pocket on the side, which you'll see here in just a moment. So I'm just eyeballing it basically and measuring it out. Now you can see it's um, my pocket. I'm going to get my mat ready to add to it. Here I decided I wanted to do another little two by two photo mat. And to the side, I wanted some more mushrooms, but I didn't have any of those print out yet. So you'll see me get it ready here, but then set it aside in a moment. And that's so I could print out some more mushrooms. So here's where I decided it and I wanted to tuck mushrooms behind it. So that's why I'll just set it aside and work on the rest. I am using a little fox here. Again, the fox will hang off the pocket. So I doubled him up first just to make it more secure, adding some more grass to it. A little of it um, sticks off the edge, which I wanted it to. I will tuck my little fox in back there. And now I'm using some of the leaves that come in the collection, tucking them behind and in front of the fox. I'm putting a little nonstick piece behind because I had to add a little more glue behind his head. So I didn't want it to accidentally glue down to the pattern paper behind it. I'm using Scotch Quick Dry for all my wet glue. Here's the little label that says We Heart Picnics. And now I've printed out my mushrooms. I'm edging them in some vintage photo. And now I'm going to tuck them, or at least one of them, behind my photo mat. This collection would be great for whether it's a picnic at the park or camping trip or just nature in general or just um, cute kid photos in them. So this little outdoors element was already made. I just cut it out and sized it to what I needed, pressing it down, I'm going back and adding, I had a few scrap pieces left, so I'm adding some more photo mats to them. And again, I had some elements left over that I wanted to use, so I'm adding those to the photo mats. Life is a picnic is what it says on that little label. And now to all the pockets, I'm adding a four and one eighth by six and one eighth photo mat. So a, fo a four by six can be placed and it'll leave a little craft mat left over. Here's an element already made. It says love, love for nature. I am adding that to the spine along with three of the flowers. I'm really pressing those down. This is going to be the back of my album. I'm adding two of the mushrooms. And here's the front. I kind of designed it all in my silhouette ahead of time, sized it all, and then just printed it out. And now I'm just gluing it all down. The little sun, which is adorable. Now I'm adding that owl again. 
the bird in a much smaller size, adding him to the tree. I'm just kind of placing my items. I'm, I'm backing that label onto craft cardstock. And now I will glue down my tree in the same fashion I did in the other ones. Some of um, the tree will hang off the edge. I will cut that off in a moment after I'm done adhering it all down. I'm tucking some of the mushrooms. And then after I adhere my bear down, I go ahead and tuck in a couple acorns next to him. And I used a lot of the elements and papers, but believe it or not, there's still more, lots more solids, elements, bows, ribbons, different things that I didn't even use. But that's what's great about this is I can do so many projects that I'm sure I'll use the other elements in different projects. But I like using making mini albums with these collections because you can do so much with them. So I already adhered the top piece of my, my um, front cover and here's where I decided to add ribbon. It would have been much easier to do the ribbon ahead of time but it was really not a big deal being that I didn't adhere it all down. So on the back I'm adding my ribbon before I add my piece of paper and I'm using some green satin ribbon that I thought went great with the collection. So I'm adhering my back piece on and my spine piece. And here's a flip through of the album. It came together quickly and it was so much fun to make. So check out the description box for all the links to Knitwit collections and all the information. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed.